become obsessed with this video. Okay, you've seen this clip before, maybe as a meme. It's Bill Gates in 1994 talking to Connie Chun for an interview. And then there's a weird break where she asks him a totally unexpected question and he actually answers it. Is it true that you can leap over a chair from a standing position? And then he responds. It depends on the size of the chair. And then something miraculous happens. I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes! Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Okay, but stop. That audio is not the real audio under the clip. And it's in those missing edits of a chair jumping video where you can kind of find the key to understanding the real Bill Gates. <laughs> yes! Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get this out of the way. I'm, I'm gonna jump a chair for this video. Well, maybe. Okay, this is a little scarier than I realized. Let's get some context first. Now you're gonna have to give me some context. Meet Bill Gates, 38 years old and the greatest American businessman of his generation. 1994 was an insane year for Bill Gates. At 38, his mother died, he got married. He regained his title as the richest man in America. He started his first charitable foundation. He bought Leonardo's Codex, and he started doing a press tour for a thing called the internet. That the internet will become a highway. You just what will come out the screen. Okay. And what about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? Sure. What? I'm 38, and I got really into like using a crock pot this year. So, thank you. I think all this context is totally crucial to understanding the chair jumping video. Because when Bill Gates started to jump over that chair, he was one person. And when he got to the other side, he was another one. Second attempt. I just feel like I'm gonna hit my head. Let's go through the tape. I wanna focus on this part. In the popular video, this part has music. But in the original broadcast, this is the underlying audio. <laughs> I, I took a step before I did it. It's okay. <laughs> that echoes what Gates said before in the original edit of the broadcast video. Watch the light, okay? Uh, I'll cheat a little bit. <laughs> yes! So let's just break this down. It's easy to focus on the silliness going on here. How did this guy let himself look so goofy again and again? I'd actually not seen that one before this video and it makes me feel strange. But I wanna focus on these quotes. Ah, I'll cheat a little. I took a step before I did it. Bill Gates made up a game to jump over a chair. He let a journalist learn about his incredible chair game. Then he scolded himself for failing to follow the rules of his own chair jumping game. I think in the wake of Bill Gates' divorce and his weird associations with Jeffrey Epstein, we realize that we kind of don't know anything about him. Uh, I... All the biographies that have come out, they were puff pieces. But this video, this video gives us our last public glimpse at the real person. The one who is so competitive that looking dumb didn't occur to him. What did occur to him was whether or not he had legitimately won at the game that he made up. Looking for a turning point in a person's life, it's kind of silly, but 1994 was a really weird year for Bill Gates. It was one in which he went from a very prestigious private individual to a major national and international figure. It was the year that he jumped the chair. Privately, he remained the same difficult, hyper-competitive person that he always was. You can see that in these antitrust hearing videos that come from the late 90s. I didn't say that. It certainly relates to Java. Java runtime relates to Java. I mean, give me a break. But publicly, look at this interview clip from 1999 from a really hostile interviewer. Gates is not just a little more polished, he's kind of nice to the guy, even though he's being a jerk. If you dropped a $10,000 bill, it wasn't worth your time to bend down to pick it up again. Is that true? No. <laughs> In 1994, he actually walked out on that interview with Connie Chan. Well, I'm done. Um, can I just ask you one, one more question, Bill? No, I don't think so. But by 1999, he had totally changed. He had jumped 
the chair. Okay, so this is the thing I'm pushing. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Maybe you have heard the phrase, jump the shark. It comes from an old episode of Happy Days in which Fonzie decides that he wants to jump over a shark. And then, you know, it's so bad, it's such a bad idea for something that it's become kind of a metaphor for when a series goes bad, for when a series turns sour. Who's ready to make the jump? I think that we need a metaphor called jumping the chair to understand when famous people, be they billionaires or politicians, go from an honest public persona to a glossy fake one that keeps us from truly understanding who they are. That's what Bill Gates did. That's how he changed. Before the chair is the unpolished, the real, the human side of a person encountering public life. The striving, the intellect, the anger, and after is the fake person that they've manufactured for public consumption. Now, there are plenty of figures who never jump the chair because their appeal is initially based on their personality and they don't let their personality change even as they become more and more prominent in public life. Joe Biden acted pretty much the same throughout his life. Uh, eventually, uh, judge me on my merit, not on my age. Same for Donald Trump. I tell you what, I wouldn't go in to lose. I've never gone in to lose in my <laughs> life. But look at Mark Zuckerberg. This is another one of my favorite clips. One that I'm almost as obsessed with as the chair jumping clip. Today, Zuckerberg can seem guarded, stiff, but this is him in 2005, lecturing to a computer science class at Harvard. Yo. All right, cool. This is the first time I ever I've had to hold one of these things. I'm just going to attach it real quick. He started with a very natural sounding yo. Like, they were like, what good could possibly come of like doing something new? And I'm like, nah, this is pretty cool. I'm like, just like imagine like what we, how cool it would be if like you could just like type in someone's name and get some information about them. And they were like, I just, I don't, I don't see it. He's so different in this clip. I mean, yes, he's still an intellectual, maybe a bit of nerd, whatever you want to call him, but he's totally authentic. He's got a sharp intelligence and he's kind of funny too. This is very different from the person who we know today, the public persona. No CS questions. When we make these powerful people objects of performance scrutiny, we inevitably lose something because they've kind of got to become fake. Natural performers can just be themselves, but people who aren't, they have to turn into something that hides exactly what it is that made them great. Because we tell them that if they do open up, we'll make fun of them about their actual passion for smoking meats. I, I, I should put them on and let them get a little bit of smoke. Uh... Or the pride that they can jump a chair. When they jump the chair, they are jumping a gulf of power. <laughs> They're on the other side, unknowable and out of reach. In 1994, Bill Gates jumped the chair. And now, today, we are just starting to realize that when he came down on the other side, he didn't just land, he kind of started hiding. I'm gonna jump this chair. Okay, I really hope you saw that. I actually did better than Bill Gates because I didn't cheat. Uh, <laughs> some of you might be kind of new to this channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I do personal and history videos on here and I jump chairs. I jump chairs. Thank you for watching. It feels good to be a gangster.